Corporate liquidation, financial report. Corporation in liquidation usually prepares two classes of financial reports. Statement of affairs and statement of realization and liquidation. Sa statement of affairs, this initial report shows the available asset values and debts of debtor corporation. So, ang corporation na nag-a-undergo ng liquidation is nag-prepare siya ng tinatawag na initial report na statement of affairs. Sa statement of affairs, dito makikita yung current values ng assets ng corporation and yung liabilities ng corporation. Yung isa pang report, statement of realization and liquidation. This shows how the receiver managed the assets of the debtor corporation on behalf of the creditors. So, kung ang statement of affairs ay initial report, more on estimated values yung mga figure na nakareflect dito. Ang statement of realization and liquidation, eto na yung actual values ng assets na nabenta, liabilities na nabayaran. And si receiver, siya yung someone na independent sa corporation. Siya yung magmamanage ng assets kung yung pagbebenta and yung pagsesettle ng mga liabilities ng corporation. Ang other term ng receiver is trustee. Statement of affairs. Normally, at the start of liquidation, a statement of affairs is prepared for the corporation to provide information about the current financial position of the company. Historical cost figures are not relevant. The various parties concerned desire information that reflects the net realizable value of debtor's assets and the ultimate application of these proceeds to specific liabilities. So, yung initial report na statement of affairs, so nakalagay dito yung total estimated values ng assets Ito yon yung the realizable value ng corporation assets nakalagay sa statement of affairs and nakalagay din doon kung ano yung mga estimated na application ng value ng assets ni corporation. Kung baga, paano, may, paano i-distribute yung total value ng assets ng corporation. Doon yon makikita sa tinatawag na statement of affairs. Classification of assets in statement of affairs. Number one, assets pledged to fully secured creditors, asset pledged to partially secured creditors, and free assets. Sa typical na balance sheet ng corporation, ang classification ng assets is current asset and non-current asset. Pero sa report, sa financial report na statement of affairs, ang classification niya ay tatlo. We have the Asset pledged to fully secured, asset pledged to partially secured, and yung free assets. Ang assets pledged to fully secured creditors, these assets are expected to realize an amount at least sufficient to satisfy the related debt. Merong mga assets si corporation na nakasecured sa kanyang liability. And nakadepende sa value ng asset kung siya ay fully kung siya ay asset full pledge to fully secured creditors or asset pledge to partially secured creditors for example ito the asset ang, ang assets ay fair value of land and building secured to notes payable so ang assets ay land and building and yung combined fair value ng land and building is 95,000 so Secured siya sa notes payable. So, nakakolateral siya sa notes payable. And let's assume na ang value ng notes payable is 85,000, ah, 87,500 and yung interest niya is 3,000. So, ang total liability is 90,500. Ngayon, since na naka-attach dyan yung land and building na 95,000, enough yung value ng naka-pledge na assets para ma-cover yung related debt niya which is yung 90,500 na notes payable. Therefore, since na enough ang fair value ng land and building na 95,000 para ma-cover yung 90,500 na related debt, therefore, ang land and building siya yung tinatawag na asset 
pledge to fully secured creditors. Kasi enough na makover ng fair value ng asset yung kanyang related debt. Asset pledge to partially secured creditors. These assets are expected to realize an amount below the related debt. For example, ang asset ay accounts receivable and yung fair value niya is 15,000 pesos. And yung accounts receivable is secured sa notes payable sa bank. And ang value ng notes payable bank is 17,500 with interest na 1,000. Ang total value ng related debt is 18,500 pesos. Hindi enough ang fair value ng accounts receivable na 15,000 para makover yung kanyang related debt which is 18,000 500. May difference na 3,500. Therefore, si accounts receivable, ang classification niya sa statement of affairs ay asset pledge to partially secured creditors. Number three, free assets. The, these assets are not pledged and available to satisfy the claims of creditors. So, ang free assets is residual definition. Meaning, kapag ang asset ay hindi naka-pledge sa, sa kahit anong liability and available siya pang-settle ng kahit anong klase ng liability, siya ay free assets. For example, ito, isa pang example ng free asset. Kanina, nag-sample tayo ng land and building with the total fair value of 95,000 pesos and nakasecured siya sa total debt Amounting 90,500 Therefore, may excess pa na 4,500 Ang classification ng difference na 4,500 Is free assets Classification of liabilities in statement of affairs Fully secured liabilities These are liabilities expected to be paid in full as a result of having sufficient collateral or pledge assets to satisfy the indebtedness. So for example, kanina, so meron tayo ditong sample ng land and building na nakakolateral sa notes payable. Therefore, since na enough yung value ng assets na nakapledge to cover the related debt, therefore, ang notes payable and interest, ang classification niya sa statement of affairs ay fully secured liabilities and yung holders ng notes payable and interest ang tawag sa kanila ay fully secured creditors partially secured liabilities liabilities expected not to be paid in full as a result of having insufficient collateral pledge or pledge assets to, satisf to satisfy the indebtedness so ibig sabihin naman Kapag naman partially secured ang liabilities, ibig sabihin, hindi enough na makover ng, re ng related asset yung total value ng liability. So for example, ito namang notes payable in bank na 18,500, secured, secured siya ng accounts receivable worth 15,500. Therefore, yung notes payable sa bank and yung interest, siya yung tinatawag na partially secured liabilities and yung holder ng notes payable bank is siya naman yung tinatawag na partially secured creditors unsecured liabilities with priority liabilities having priority under the law these liabilities in order to priority are ibig sabihin naman ang unsecured liabilities with priority Sila yung mga unsecured na liabilities pero sila yung priority na babayaran. Meaning kapag nag-liquidate ang corporation, yung mga unsecured liabilities with priority, sila yung unang babayaran bago yung ibang creditors. Example, debts due for personal service rendered by the insolvent, rendered the insolvent by employees, laborers or domestic servants unpaid employee salaries and wages and benefit plans. So basically, yung mga sweldo ng mga empleyado ng corporation is considered siya as unsecured liabilities with 
priority. Legal expense and expenses incurred in the administration of insolvent estate for the common interest of creditors. So basically, yung, nam, yung letter B is ito naman yung liquidation expenses. So siya rin ay unsecured with priority. And last, debt, taxes, and assessments to, due to national government. So yung mga taxes na payable sa gobyerno is considered then as unsecured with priority. Unsecured liabilities without priority have no collateral relating to the to their indebtedness. So, ang unsecured liabilities with priority, ah sorry, without priority is siya yung residual definition. Kapag hindi nag-fall sa tatlo, meaning siya ay without priority, unsecured. And yung isa pang example ng unsecured liabilities without priority ay ito. Kanina meron tayo ditong partially secured creditor. Yung 18,500 which is secured by 15,000 pesos accounts receivable. Therefore, yung difference na 3,500, ang classification naman nito pag nilagay sa statement of affairs is unsecured creditor without priority. Okay, so application tayo ngayon ng statement of affairs. Gagawa tayo ng statement of affairs. The balance sheet of goes out company is presented below. So, ito yung balance sheet ng corporation na mag undergo ng liquidation. Meron siyang cash, receivable, inventory supplies, prepayments, and land, building, equipment, goodwill. So, meron siyang liabilities na notes payable, secured by accounts receivable, accounts payable, accrued liabilities, Meron din siyang notes payable to insurance company, secured by land and building. And meron din common stock deficit. Total assets is 205,000 pesos. And ito yung additional information. So, i-consider natin itong mga additional information na to sa pag-prepare ng statement of affairs. The company expects to realize the amount shown on accounts receivable and so on. So, gagawa tayo ngayon ng statement of affairs. Okay, so, nire-write natin sa index card yung balance sheet ng corporation. And, ito yung additional information na related sa assets and liabilities ng corporation. Ngayon, gagawa tayo ng statement of affairs. And ang una muna nating gagawin is kukumputin muna natin yung estimated deficiency ng corporation. So ang gagawin natin is pagkukumputin natin yung total assets at fair value minus the total liabilities at settlement value. Makukumpute natin doon yung estimated deficiency. So ipa-plot muna natin yung book value no mga assets we have cash 1000 accounts receivable 15000 inventory 55000 na iplat na natin yung book values ng assets and yung liabilities. After natin maplat yung mga assets and liabilities and their corresponding book values, ipaplat naman natin yung corresponding net realizable value ng bawat assets and yung settlement values ng liabilities. <coughs> so, i-consider natin yung Additional information. Number one, the company expects to realize the amounts shown on accounts receivable. So, ibig sabihin, yung 15,500, ine-expect yan ng corporation na ma-realize in full. So, ibig sabihin, 15,000 din yung fair value or yung net realizable value ng accounts receivable. The inventories can be sold for 32 
32,000. So, net realizable value ng inventory is 32,000 pesos. The estimated realizable value of supplies is 500. So, 500 pesos for the supplies. The prepayments are expected to expire during the liquidation period. So, ibig sabihin, ang prepayments is ang net realizable value niya ay zero. The land has a market value of 37,500. So, 37,500 sa land. The building has a current value of 57,500. Patents written can be sold for an estimated... Ah, sorry. Patents written of the books in the past years but with a realizable value of 10,375. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa tayong isang asset na ilalagay sa Statement of Affairs, yung patent na niritten off nung mga previous year. Since na meron pa siyang fair value, kailangan din natin ilagay yung value ng patent, 10,375. Okay, na-skip pa like number 7. <laughs> the equipment can be sold for an estimated 14,000. So, equipment is 14,000 pesos. Number 8, okay na number 8. Number 9, the books do not show accrued employee benefits amounting 3,000 pesos. So, meron ba tayong liability na ilalagay sa Statement of Affairs. So, accrued employee benefits na 3,000 pesos. And estimated liquidation expense is 7,500 pesos. Okay, so meron ba tayong mga blanks dun sa portion ng, no, ng net realizable value? So, yung cash is still the same, 1,000 pesos. Yung goodwill, ang goodwill, kapag merong goodwill na nakalagay sa reports ng corporation, ibig sabihin maganda yung financial standing ng company. Maganda yung standing niya sa industry or maganda rin yung name ng corporation. Maganda yung image And since na ang corporation ay nagli-liquidate na, ang goodwill is valued palagi at zero. Yung notes payable and yung other liabilities is still same yung settlement value. Interest is 1,000. Salaries is 3,500. Interest insurance 3,000. Payroll taxes is 1,000. Notes payable is 87,500. Okay. Since nalalagyan na natin yung lahat ng net realizable value ng assets and liabilities, ito total na natin yung total fair value ng assets and yung total settlement value ng liabilities. Okay. So, kukumpitin na natin yung total net realizable value ng assets. So, from cash hanggang sa patent. So, ang total net realizable value ng assets is 167,875. Total settlement value ng liabilities from notes payable bank hanggang sa liquidation expense ang total liabilities is 170,500. Yung total assets is 167. Yung total liabilities is 170. So, ibig sabihin, hindi enough para makover ng total assets ni corporation yung lahat ng kanyang pagkakautang. So, merong estimated deficiency na 167,875 minus 170,500 2,625 estimated defi 
Shen C to creditors. And sa paggawa ng statement of affairs, dapat ito din yung makocompute natin na estimated deficiency. Ang last na gagawin natin bago tayo mag-proceed sa statement of affairs is lalagyan natin ng corresponding classification yung assets and liabilities ni corporation. So si cash, ang classification niya ay free assets. Accounts receivable. Ang accounts receivable ay nakasecured sa notes payable bank. So nakasecure siya sa notes payable Bank. So, siya ay pledge assets. So, aalamin natin kung siya ba ay asset pledge to fully secured creditors or partially sec or asset pledge to partially secured creditors. So, yung notes payable na bank is 17,500. Ngayon, kapag ang asset ay nakasecured sa notes payable, lagi nating iisipin na meron pa tong corresponding na interest. So, Yung notes payable bank is 17,500. Yung interest niya ay 1,000. So, 17,500 plus yung 1,000. Ibig sabihin, hindi enough yung accounts receivable para mas cover yung kanyang related debt. Therefore, siya ay asset pledge to partially secured creditors. Inventory. Ang inventory ay free assets. Supplies, free assets. Prepayments, wala namang value. So, pwede natin i-skip. Land and building. Ang land and yung building ay nakasecured sa notes payable na insurance. So, aalamin natin kung siya ba ay Fully secured or partially secured. Ang total land and building is 95,000 pesos. And yung notes payable is 87,500. And since na notes payable yan, hanapin natin yung corresponding interest. So meron din siyang interest dito. 3,000 tsaka 87. So, 95,000 yung total value ng land and building and 90,500 naman yung value ng related debt. So, ibig sabihin, ang land and building is asset pledged to fully secured creditors. Equipment. Equipment ay free asset. Yung patent ay free asset din. Liabilities naman tayo. Classification ng liabilities, notes payable na secured ng accounts receivable. So, titingnan na lang natin yung classification ng accounts receivable, which is asset pledge to partially secured creditors. Therefore, yung holders ng notes payable bank is partially secured creditors. Accounts payable. So, accounts payable is unsecured creditors without priority residual definition interest ng bank so kung ano ang classification ng principal yun din ang classification ng interest so ang classification ng principal ng interest na to is partially secured creditor therefore partially secured creditor din ito salaries okay ang salaries ng employees ay unsecured creditors with priority Interest insurance. So, ang interest insurance is nakabase sa classification ng kanyang principal and yung notes payable na insurance is secured by land and building which is asset pledged to fully secured creditors. Therefore, ito ay fully secured creditors. Payroll taxes, unsecured with priority. Notes payable insurance, Fully secured creditors. Accrued employee benefits. So, anything na payable sa employees, lalo pag, lalo pag may mga benefits and salaries, is considered as unsecured creditors with priority. Liquidation expenses. Unsecured creditors with priority. 
So, naklasify na natin ang lahat ng assets and liabilities ng corporation. Therefore, pwede na tayo mag-proceed sa paggawa ng Statement of Affairs.